Lord Venkatesha's grace to one blessed by Sri Raghavendra. Recording of facts is necessary in respect of any aspect. In the genealogical tree, tracing the forebears up to the fifth or sixth generation of ancestors may not be difficult. But beyond that, it would not be possible in most families. The reason for this is the absence of proper records pertaining to the bygone times. At least in this computer age, proper documentation of the lineage and the achievements of successive generations should be maintained for the benefit of posterity as the exemplary accomplishments of the earlier generations should serve as an edification for successive descendants. I wanted to write about Sri Suyatindra Tirtha's lineage in this volume. Sri Sushamindra Tirtha was the one who had initiated him to Sanyasa Ashrama. In part 3, I had furnished the genealogical tree covering the ancestors of Sri Raghavendra and the line thereafter descending up to Sri Sushamindra Tirtha. And to know the branch line to which Sri Suyatindra belongs, I got in touch with some important people. Sri Suyatindra, as is known well, had become the Pitatipati in 2009. Some said that he is the descendant of a branch line of one of the grandsons of Sri Raghavendra's Purvashrama elder brother Sri Guru Rajachar, while others held the view that he belongs to the line of an offspring of one of Sri Raghavendra's great grandchildren. When this writing was under compilation, Sri Suyatindra Tirtha had visited Chennai. At that time, his Purvashrama second son Venkateshachar had come with him. When I sought information about the Vamsavruksha, he at once wrote it down and gave me. According to the details he made available, Sri Suyatindra's Purvashrama name is Sri Sus uh, Sushilendra Achar who had siblings by name Anjanabai, Dhirendra Achar, Guru Rajachar and Srinivasa Achar. Sri Suitindra's progenitor was Ananta Achar and his father was Gopal Achar. Prior to him, the forebear was known by the name Raghavendra Achar. Sri Raghavendra Lakshmi Narayan Achar, Purushottam Achar, Sri Vadindra, Sri Dhirendra was the order one after the other in that descendancy. Dhirendra had three sons and a daughter in his Purvashrama life. Of those three sons, one was the Raghavendra Achar mentioned earlier. But from Raghavendra Achar to Gopal Achar, there are some missing links, for there should be at least four or five names in between. Till this publication going to the press, I have not been furnished any further information by the Purvashrama son of Sri Suyatindra. And when authentic information is on hand, it will be incorporated in the next volume. It's only for this reason I had said in the beginning that like the cataloging of the lineage, even noteworthy incidents need to be recorded. If Sir Thomas Munro that way had not recorded his experiences, who would have known of the incident concerning him? It's the common perception that Sri Raghavendra, who had entered his Brindavana alive and is still existing in his holy sepulchre, radiating there from uh, his grace to mankind as a Jagat Guru, is a proven reality as evidenced by the incident concerning Sir Thomas Munro. It would, on the contrary, be more appropriate to consider that Sri Guru Raja, by grazing Sir Thomas Munro, has brought him to light and spread his celebrity all around. Readers of my writings have often expressed the opinion that they are able to know about Sri Raghavendra from my books only, a large number of them voicing that my authentic portrayals on the saint have been instrumental in my spreading his glory all around the world. But I would categorically say that 
it's because of my writing about his glory that i am enjoying as his blessing such world wide renown the narratives in first person here bear reference to the original author shri amman satyanathan while shri raghavendra is a divine gift of shri venkatramana we shall now be delving into an incident involving sir thomas munro who had been graced by the same deity it was the time when sir thomas munro was the governor of the then madras presidency that extended to a vast stretch comprising many adjoining areas munro at that time was often suffering from pain in the stomach that was found to be incurable the palliatives giving him only temporary relief the ailment prevented his going on official tour to distant places all the remedies tried having been of no avail his secretary was ever sorrowful about the deteriorating health of munro he was an ardent devotee of lord venkata jalapati visiting tirupati whenever he had time for making such trip the secretary was knowing about sri raghavendra having given darshan to munro at manchala though it was a unique kind of spiritual experience that munro had at manchala the secretary felt that it was during his official visit and connected with something related to the administration of the province that sri raghavendra had given darshan to munro and even for that kind of a darshan one should have undoubtedly earned the punya or merits of many earlier births unable to see the suffering of his boss the secretary ventured to talk to him one day about his illness and put across to him that he would suggest something to be tried practically at no cost at all i cannot have any further treatment please i have borne all the miseries arising out of various remedies tried without any positive result so far sir this one is a treatment without any cost and a spiritually oriented one too okay tell me please munro said in a rather dejected frame of mind sir you submit in prayer to the lord of the seven hills from here itself that while visiting chandragiri you will go to tirumala for his darshan if a vow is made in that manner will i become all right since all remedies have failed i am suggesting this something to be done with devotion soulfully you have seen sri raghavendra in person and he has spoken to you too the one who cannot be seen even in dream by others and what a great soul you should be to be carrying immense merits punya of the earlier births that undoubtedly is the reason why i am telling you that you should pray to govinda with whole hearted devotion to remove this misery you are suffering from yes i shall certainly do what you have advised but i belong to a different religious following can i go inside the sanctum for darshan it is proverbial that the very sight of a temple tower confers immense benefits to the beholder even a darshan of the god from outside should suffice and hindu dharma has solution for all mundane problems it's enough if my malady is cured only then i can remain peaceful and would be able to carry out my duties otherwise i may have to think of getting back to england Munro mulled in that state of agony that he was passing through. The time then came for Munro's visit to Chandragiri. As deliberated with his secretary, he went to Tirumala with him, availing of that opportunity. From outside the precincts of the temple, he prayed to the Lord of the Seven Hills with immense bhakti emanating from the depth of his heart. And what a wonder! Within a few days of that visit, Munro's pain started subsiding and he could take his normal diet as before. Munro felt overjoyed at the divine grace that had been extended to him. In answer to his prayer to Lord Venkatramana, as a gesture of thanksgiving to the Lord, he thought of doing something commemorative of the divine mercy that he had been blessed with. 
which he desired should be of an everlasting kind. Accordingly, he created a trust to implement a scheme of free distribution of pongal as naivedya to the devotees every day after its offering to the Lord in the religious way. Pongal is a rice preparation offered to the deity in the Hindu temples. For meeting the financial needs of the trust, he arranged for the benefaction of the entire Kotabailu village in the Vailpat Taluk of Chittur district for this purpose. And from then onwards, Pongal is being prepared every day in a big cauldron called Gangalam. And after its Naivedya to the Lord, it's being distributed free to devotees. The scheme thus having acquired the popular identity of being called as Manro Gangalam. The TTD authorities are now managing this trust and overseeing the distribution of this Naivedya to the devotees. The Lord of Trimala, it could thus be seen, is a deity who removes the distresses of devotees, irrespective of their religious adherence. After Thomas Munro, there was one Lord Williams of the British government who was holding a top administrative post. He too was affected by an incurable disease and was disgusted at the suffering he had to undergo. Despite having consulted many doctors and trying a variety of treatments advised by them, an ardent devotee of Lord Venkatramana who was working under Lord Williams told him one day, Lord Venkata Jalapati of the uh, Seven Hills has cured even irremediable illnesses and I would suggest you praying to him wholeheartedly for his mercy vowing to have the darshan of him while going to Chandragiri next. Lord Williams remained silent for some time. Later, he himself observed, Oh, he is the deity who had cured Sir Thomas Munro of his ailment, is it not? Let us go tomorrow itself, climbing that hilltop abode of the Lord on foot. Accordingly, the very next day, he started for Tirumala. Standing outside the entrance to the temple tower, Williams prayed to Lord Venkatramana with immense bhakti at heart. A few days after his worshipping the Lord of the Seven Hills, there was a remarkable improvement in his health. So, he too created a trust to administer a scheme commemorative of it to be of benefit to the devotees on a permanent footing. Accordingly, at a distance of one kilometer from the base and along the footpath leading to the Tirumala hill, he had a shed constructed for supplying water at that spot to devotees going to the hill on foot. And the trust created for this purpose is managed now by the TTD authorities, called by the name uh, Lord Williams Chalipandiri. We have seen a lot about the mysterious happenings at Thirumala in part 7. Lord Venkatramana, the divine being who is adored most in this Kali Yuga, has been worshipped by the spiritually exalted saints and dasas from time immemorial, not to speak of the laity who outnumber them, times without number in every era. Sri Raghavendra during his Vyasaraja Avatara, had done puja to Lord Venkatramana for 12 years and indubitably it was by his grace that Sri Vyasaraja was born as Venkatanatha in the next mundane birth, providing meaning to those divine orchestrations. We have seen before that Tirumala is a hill that came to the terrestrial environs from the Vaikuntha a hill that was in existence even before Tirumala came to its perch is still standing in its locale. Sri Venkatramana is present there also and we shall later be having darshan of him too in our mind's eye through this writing. Haridasas around, abound at places where Lord Venkatramana is ensconced. We shall now be having darshan of a Haridasa in our visualization as we go through this writing. Dasas are of several types and the one we are to see now was a Dasa of whom even a king was envious about 
and what a status he was enjoying in society and what his later life turned out to be will be most absorbing to know about let us proceed further to get acquainted with all those